My mother was born in 1929. She was the one that got me started on wine because she made wine in her basement. It was her 80th birthday, and I bought her a bottle of 1929 Latoura. You know, think about that. 80 years later, and somebody can have that and think that the day I was born, some guy might have been out in the field picking berries. I think our poetry wine is first off representative of Stag's Leap. Stag's Leap gives you subtle, lush tannins, but it also gives you the fruit characteristics that represent a lot of what Napa wines are about. Hillside vineyards are really rare. There's not a lot of them in all of Napa. When we bought the property originally, it was the 40 acres on the valley floor. And every day we'd look at the hillside and I kept thinking, boy, that's, that's the money over there. When I acquired that vineyard, then it started to come together that we needed to bring someone like David on board. Just a few years ago, we got our hands on this vineyard and Cliff and I talked about how we could take a vineyard that's 30 years old and make a world-class wine out of it. Here we are with the Cabernet Sauvignon here at the Poetry Vineyard. This is how you would like to see clusters hanging in here individually and not stacked on top of each other. This property that we're standing on today, it's on a hillside, tremendous soil makeup here, a lot of volcanic rock, some clays. But Cabernet is done very, very well here with the warmth that we get during the day, the coolness in the evening, it's special. I always thought that the flagship wine that we were producing should have its own entity, its own name. One day I saw, you know, that billboard with, you know, and it's bottled poetry, and I thought, well, poetry, there's a nice name for a wine. I'm a true believer that you hire experts, and I kind of let David do his thing. The excitement and passion for myself uh, is definitely viticulture. It's guiding and making selections, how to lay a vineyard out, the irrigation, the density of vines, the rootstock that's selected, the trellising, and the pruning. Crop levels are what we prune to and what we green harvest to, and the temperatures have been very, very good. It should be a tremendous vintage. The core team at Cliff Lady right now is David Abreu, our viticulturalist, and Philippe Melka is our winemaker. He's new to the team, he started this year. We're quite excited to see what he can do with the wines. Right now, for me at this stage, the focus is really trying to be make the, the best one we can with the, the fruit we have. Blending is really, it's like creating this perfect society. You have different lots of wine. Each lot will have a different character, a different personality, if you like. And it's trying to create something very harmonious, uh, putting all that together. What makes a great wine is really a wine who reflect a sight. A wine we tell you a story. A wine also who keep your brain going. When we have such a great sight and such a wonderful grapes, we try to minimize anything we are doing with the wine. We do very natural fermentations, uh, how much we are going to extract from those grapes, how much flavors and how much structure we are going to extract to arrive to a product who needs to be in perfect balance. For winemaker, great wines needs to have the combination of concentration, of course, uh, but also having a lot of depth and having a lot of sophistication. And you kind of feel in you that this is something really special. We don't make a lot of poetry wine every year. It's uh, very small, it's very strict selection, so only the best of the best grapes go in there. People think uh, a wine like poetry is made uh, from just one wine, but we start with 30, 40 different type of wine to make just a final one wine at the end. Just having Philippe this year, he'll bring different ideas and a different way of doing things, and it's kind of exciting. You know, harvest is a very exciting part of the process. Uh, it's like the new baby, we always say the new baby is coming, because every harvest is very different. Time. When you see fruit coming in, and the whole team is excited and they're working and it's going up the conveyors and you know they're sorting it out berry by berry to get only the best fruit to go in. It's just an exciting time in the valley. 
The timing of harvest is extremely important and that's what we're looking at right now. If you harvest too early, the wine tend to be a little lean and if you harvest too late, they tend to be a little heavy and flabby and without really a lot of intensity and energy. We phased the replant on the Poetry Vineyard, so the first section now is giving us our third harvest. Each year, I think, is going to be more exciting as we get more and more fruit from the Poetry Vineyard, more things to choose from. Year in and year out, to be able to come outside and live under Mother Nature's elements and start a story in January and finish it in October. From the time we start to prune to the time that we harvest, it's tremendous. Just a few years ago, we made some major adjustments here to bring a vineyard that was a B to a AAA and raise that wine quality in here tremendously. This site took two and a half, three years to get us uh, at that level and it's paying off today.